I'm Akiko Fujita in Las Vegas here on the ground at CES 2024, where one of the big focuses is about AI on devices. The car, one of those big devices, and we're now joined by CEO and president of Qualcomm, Cristiano Oman, who's been making a big push into the auto space. Um, Cristiano, it was just one year ago that you announced the Ride Flag system on chip, this big push into auto. What kind of momentum have you seen since then? Yes, we're, we're very happy. Um, you know, we're working with virtually every company as the car is really becoming a computer on wheels. Digital is becoming the most important uh, part of the automotive transformation. And the fact that we created this platform, the Snapdragon Digital Chassis, is really resonating well with all the car companies. And you see a lot of opportunities for innovation. The fully immersive cockpit experience, autonomy, safety with assisted driving, connectivity to the cloud, and of course, Gen AI on an automotive as well. We've got to talk about Gen AI in the car. That's one of the big headlines you've taken away here from CES. What does that mean in terms of the user experience? Yes, you know, Gen AI is going to develop on the devices or the edge different than it develops on the cloud, you know, and the two are going to work together. So think about you, you go into your car and your car is going to become personalized to you. You have a couple of things that Gen AI will bring uh, to you as, as a driver of the car. First of all, you now have the opportunity to have conversations with your car with real context. Think about large language models like ChatGPT. When you're behind the wheel, that's the perfect interface for you to be behind the wheel. And you're going to talk to your car about where you need to go. The car is going to remind you of something. The car is going to be your digital assistant with you all the time. But the other things that you're going to see happening in the car, as the car become a hub for services, the car is going to learn about you or know what you do, where you need to go. Like a simple example, the car will know that you need in your calendar, you have certain appointments or maybe you made a call and you need to pick up groceries. It will tell you, you plan ahead for you. If you normally call somebody when you get to your car, the car is going to ask you, do you want to call that person? right now, as it does as it do every day, and things like that. But the reality is, we don't know yet. There's so much excitement, so many developers bringing new applications, and the car is going to be the next computing platform, like your phone, like your PC. We're going to see a lot of use cases. The auto space, certainly part of this larger transition we're seeing within Qualcomm to diversify beyond just mobile. When you look at the potential in this space, how big of a revenue driver do you think auto can be for Qualcomm? Oh, it's, uh, it's going to be very big. You know, we announced we have over $35 billion of a, of a contracted pipeline, and we are ahead of our projections to hit $9 billion in revenue by the end of the decade. So it's going to be a substantial part of Qualcomm revenues, and as you said, it uh, a very important step in the diversification and growth of the company. We've heard over and over at this conference, AI in devices, transformational is the word we keep hearing. Obviously that unlocks a lot for Qualcomm. How much value are you thinking about when you think about the car, you think about the smartphone, you think about the PC? What does it mean for Qualcomm? Very good, look, first of all, uh, I'm going to take credit. We start talking about on-device AI before it was popular, right? We've been, we've been talking about this for years. We believe that how you think about computing on devices, whether your phone, whether your PC and your car, that's going to be the new accelerated computing. And you're going to run a lot of AI on devices. Phones, uh, we started to see as early as 2024, some very interesting use cases. Uh, even with flagships that are launching uh, early this year, that could create a new upgrade cycle for phones, and that will, by definition, just increase the phone market. PC, we look at the on-device AI at the biggest day of win for our entry into the PC space. And of course, we talk about the car. So you've got a, a number of channels there that you can tap into. It Absolutely. sounds like a lot of that will be reflected in 2024. It's not just about the idea, but in the financials, we'll see that. I think we're going to start it to see those things come to life in 2024. First, devices, flagship launches on Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Uh, I think started with the upcoming uh, launch of Samsung. You're going to start it to see a lot of interesting uses of on-device AI. Then 
you're going to see the new Microsoft Windows coming with X Elite in the second half of 2024. Uh, and then I think we're just at the beginning of that change with cars. You've got the, the macro headwinds that we've been seeing. There's also the political headwinds also in China. In some ways, Qualcomm kind of caught in the crosshairs, whether it is the ban on iPhones, whether it is about sort of the overall lawmaker push to try and ban any supplies to company like Huawei as well. When you think about the potential in the market, you get more than 50% of your revenue from there. Does the benefit still outweigh the risk for you? Look, I'm going to, I'm going to provide maybe a different outlook on this. Uh, and I think it may be a more optimistic outlook, if, if I may. Look, as we diversify and we grow the company, uh, we started to see that also happening with our China business. If you look about uh, our mobile business in China, uh, we power all of the flagships and the high tier for all the Chinese brands from Oppo, Vivo, Xiaomi, uh, Honor, and many other brands. And both their domestic market and some of their global markets as well. We're working with virtually every Chinese EV company uh, right now. And if you look at what's happening with China EV, and we expect that as we go into computing and even the internet of things uh, for industrial, we're starting to see new Chinese partners as well. So if you have a leading technology, you're gonna have a big business in China. The good thing about Qualcomm is as of today, we're not focused on the data center, we're focused on devices. And so far, uh, many of the policies has not yet restricted the ability to continue to do business in phones, in PCs and cars. And uh, we, want, we want that to continue. If anything, while we cannot predict the future, I think stronger relationship between the Chinese enterprises and American enterprises will always serve as a stabilizing factor in the relationship. So the policy is not as restrictive, it sounds like right now for you, but no. given where the conversation is going in DC, is there any thought within Qualcomm to reduce exposure in China? Look, I, I think it, it's the true for all the semiconductor companies. So I think the, as technology gets developed, you're going to have a big business challenge just a function of GDP. I think our focus is less about diversifying from China, more about diversifying from mobile, because we want to create new growth uh, uh, vectors for the company. Mobile is a great market. Every time you have an upgrade, you're going to have growth, but it's a fully penetrated market. So that's why we look into markets such as the automotive, the PC, the industrial IoT. It's just growth opportunities for us. Okay. Cristiano, thank you so much for your time. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Likewise. Thank you.